Welcome to Electron Line. We're in the process of calculating the power factor correction and in the previous video we determined that with the parameters given we had an initial impedance of 2.88 ohms, a resistance of 2.304 ohms, of course that won't change, and then the initial current of 41.67 amps. We also need to calculate the reactive, uh, the uh, uh, inductive reactance, that's what I was looking for, and so we can then set up our triangle, we have the phase angle, we have the impedance and the resistance, so we can see that the tangent of the phase angle is the inductive reactance over the resistance, so therefore the inductive reactance can be calculated to be 1.728 ohms. And then in the video before that, we discovered that the final impedance, after we add a capacitor, so that we have capacitive reactance there, then we can calculate the new impedance by taking the old impedance and multiplying it by this factor right here. So what we're going to do now is try some values for x sub c. So we're not yet, we will later directly calculate the, the capacitor required. But right now let's just throw in some values for the capacitor reactants with the initial impedance of 2.88 ohms, add some capac capacitor reactants to the circuit in parallel, then we calculate this factor and now we have our new impedance, the final impedance, hopefully a larger impedance, therefore requiring less current to the circuit. So it turns out when we first try 2 ohms of capacitor reactants, we actually have a smaller power factor and therefore our impedance actually dropped. So that would not be a good value, it would not be a good capacitor that only provides 2 ohms of capacitor reactants. But if we use a different capacitor, and now we have capacitor reactants of 4 ohms, notice that now this, this quantity increased, and now we have a final impedance of 3.56 ohms, which is larger than the initial impedance, and therefore we'll have a larger power factor and less current required. When we go to 6 ohms, it turns out we have the exact same value which probably means that the correct value should somewhere between, be between 4 and 6 ohms, let's say about 5 ohms, and therefore if we have capacitor reactants equals to minus J5, when we put it in the, the uh, real and, and imaginary uh, components, then we can see that the final impedance would be 3.6 ohms, that's the maximum impedance we can, we can gain or we can have when we put the correct capacitor in parallel. Now we're going to calculate what that correct capacitor is later, we just want to see the trends here. Then you can see that if you continue to increase the capacitor reactants, now you're starting to get less and less of an impedance when you get all the way up to 20 ohms, now your impedance is only 3.12 ohms, so that's not the optimum value to be used for that correction factor. For the, for the uh, power factor correction, we need to pick the correct capacitor so that we maximize the impedance and here by using a series of values we noticed that if the capacitor reactance is around 5 ohms we have the maximum, uh, in, uh, the maximum impedance and therefore the largest power factor, probably very close to 1, and therefore we have the least amount of current required to power our circuit. So we're still going to figure out how to calculate the exact value, but at least this gives us a good feel for how this works. You can see that it's, it's all about finding the correct capacitor that gives us the correct capacitor reactance to give us the maximum impedance and therefore the minimum, power, the minimum current required to provide the correct amount of power to the circuit. And that's how it's done.